Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about JSON Web Tokens in Python. So if you're not familiar with JSON Web Tokens, they're basically a way to encode information and pass that information along to different parties and allow those parties to verify that that information is legit. So this verification comes through a secret that only the parties that are interested in the information know. If the secret changes, then they know that the information is not legitimate and they know to ignore that information. So of course, this explanation will make more sense once I show you, but here's an example on the jot.io site. Uh, here they have on the left-hand side an encoded JSON web token, and on the right-hand side they have the decoded version. So you see there are three parts to it. There's a header, which basically tells you the algorithm used to encode the signature the type, which is a JSON web token. The middle one here is the payload. That's the information that we're most interested in. And as you see, it's just JSON data. And then the final one is the signature, which basically verifies that the preceding information is legitimate. So the reason why you'd use JSON web tokens is because you can use them across different languages because it's a standard and it uses JSON, which is pretty easy to work with. So in Python, what you want to do is you need to install PyJot. So it's pip install PYJWT. I already have it installed on my machine, so I won't install it again. But if I start up Python, I'll then be able to generate JSON web tokens. And you'll see in a second how the JSON web tokens I generate in my console here can be plugged into this jot.io debugger. And you can see that the data is exactly the same. So it's pretty easy to use. First you import JWT, and then you have two functions available to you. You have encode or decode, and it's pretty obvious what those do. So first you'd use decode, and the parameters it takes is a JSON object. So in Python, this is a dictionary. So this JSON object, I'll say pretty is the key, and the value will be printed. And then, you can use a secret. So in this case, my secret will be don't tell anyone. And then finally, you can have an algorithm for signing the token, but I'll just leave it as the default, which is HS256, and it's the same that is used on jot.io. So once I run this, I get a value here. So starting with the E, you ignore the B in the apostrophe, that's Python. But if you copy this token and you replace the token in here, if I can delete everything, I can see the payload here. So pretty and printed. So even though this token is invalid because it's not using the right signature, I can still see the payload data. So this is not secret data. So keep that in mind if you're using JSON web tokens that you're not dealing with data that is completely secret. But it's telling me that the signature is invalid. So I know I shouldn't trust this information because the right secret wasn't used to generate it. And in this case, the secret key is secret. So if I change this to don't tell anyone, like I did uh, on the console, it says signature verified. If I remove just one character like the E, it becomes invalid again. So I add the E back and a signature verified. And it's basically the same thing in Python. So if I assign this to a variable, I'll say my token, and then I decode this token using the decode function. So the first argument is the token. The second argument will be the secret key. So don't tell anyone. And the third argument is optional. It is the algorithm, but I'll leave it as the default. So when I run this, I get pretty printed in return. And if I don't have the right secret key, I get an exception. It's telling me that the signature verification failed. So why would you want to use JSON web tokens? Really, it's a good way to verify information in between different types of clients, uh, different types of clients and servers. So the reason why I'm showing you this now is because in the next video, I'll be creating an API where this token is used to verify the user every time they make a request to the API. So instead of having them log in every time they use the API, you simply have them log in once, you return a token. This token will have some information about the user 
And then every time they make a request, you take that token, you decode it, and you make sure the signature is correct. If it is correct, then you know you are dealing with the person that you originally gave the token to. So even if someone faked the data, they wouldn't be able to fake the signature, gener the signature generation because they don't know the secret key. So if the secret key gets out, then yeah, they can generate fake tokens. But as long as the secret key remains secret, then they won't be able to generate secret tokens or valid tokens. So that's it for JSON web tokens. They are very simple to deal with, very simple to understand, um, but they'll make more sense once I use them in a real example. So if you have any questions on JSON web tokens, you can ask them down below. And the next video is going to cover how to use JSON web tokens to verify users in an API in Flask. So watch out for that video. So that's it for this video. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And if you haven't checked out prettyprinted.com, check it out. I have a few courses up. They're all Flask courses right now, but I do plan on making more general courses. Like, for instance, one of the next courses I'm going to make is a course on how to use the Python request module. So if you're interested in that or anything Flask related, check out prettyprinted.com and you can view those courses. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.